Have you heard of the fourth industrial revolution? The first was mechanical, the second was mass production, the third was automation, and the fourth, we're in the middle of it, it's artificial intelligence. There is a fundamental change happening in the way we live and the way we work, and it's happening right now. While AI and its application across businesses are not new, recently generative AI has become a hot topic worldwide with the incredible success of ChatGPT, the popular chatbot from OpenAI. It reached 100 million active monthly users in just two months, becoming the fastest growing consumer application. The closest to this was TikTok and it took nine months, which is still really fast. So what powers ChatGPT? Large Language Models, LLMs. In this video, we're gonna talk about how you can leverage the power of LLMs on your private data to build transformative AI-powered applications using MongoDB and Atlas Vector Search. We're also going to walk through an example of building an application that uses semantic search, machine learning models, and Atlas Vector Search for finding movies using natural language queries. For instance, to find funny movies with lead characters that are not human, that would involve performing a semantic search that understands the meaning and intent behind the query to retrieve relevant movie recommendations and not just the keywords present in the data set. Using vector embeddings, you can leverage the power of LLMs for your use case, like semantic search, a recommendation system, anomaly detection, or a customer support chatbot, which are all based on your own data. Now to do that, we first have to understand what vector embeddings are. Well, a vector is a list of floating point numbers representing a point in an n-dimensional embedding space, and that captures semantic information about the text that it represents. For instance, an embedding for the string MongoDB is awesome using an open source LLM model called All Mini LM L6 V2 would consist of 384 floating point numbers and it would look something like this. Now, later on in this tutorial, we're going to cover the steps to obtain vector embeddings just like this. So now we know what a vector is and vector embeddings. Well, what is vector search? Well, vector search is a capability that allows you to find related objects that have a semantic similarity. That means searching for data based on meaning rather than the keywords present in the data set. Vector search uses machine learning models to transform unstructured data like text, audio, images, and other types of data into numeric representations called vector embeddings. And these capture the intent and the meaning of the data. And then it finds related content by comparing the distances between these vector embeddings. Now, the most commonly used method for finding the distance between these vectors involves calculating the cosine similarity between two vectors. But that sounds way too complicated for my brain to comprehend. So I just want something that can just do this for me so that I don't have to think about it. And this is where Atlas Vector Search comes in. Atlas Vector Search is a fully managed service that simplifies the process of effectively indexing high dimensional vector data within MongoDB and being able to perform fast vector similarity searches. With Atlas Vector Search, you can use MongoDB as a standalone vector database for a new project or augment your existing MongoDB collections with vector search functionality. Having a single solution that can take care of your operational application data as well as your vector data eliminates the complexities of using a standalone system just for vector search functionality, such as data transfer and infrastructure management overhead. With Atlas Vector Search, you can use the powerful capabilities of vector search in any major public cloud like AWS, Azure, GCP, and achieve massive scalability and data security out of the box. So let's move on to the tutorial now. We'll be using a movie data set containing over 23,000 documents in MongoDB. And we'll use the All Mini LM L6 V2 model from Hugging Face for generating the vector embeddings during the index time as well as query time. But you can apply the same concepts by using a data set and model of your own choice as well. You will need a MongoDB Atlas account and a Hugging Face account for a hands on experience. And when we're looking at a movie database, it may contain various types of content such as the movie description, plot, genre, actors, uh, users' comments, movie posters, etc. And these can all easily be converted into vector embeddings. 
Now in a similar manner, the user query can also be converted into a vector embedding, and then the vector search can find the most relevant results by finding the nearest neighbors in the embedding space. Now for our first step, we'll need to set up and connect to our MongoDB instance. If you don't already have a MongoDB Atlas account, it's completely free. There's a link in the video description below. And if you need help getting your first cluster set up and running, there's a great video right here that can walk you through that. Now for this tutorial, we'll be using one of our sample data sets, the sample underscore mflix database, which contains a movie collection where each document contains fields like title, plot, genre, cast, directors, etc. And we're going to use Node.js, but if you'd rather see examples in Python, there is a written version of this tutorial linked in the video description that uses Python. All right, so I have an empty directory here and we're going to initialize a new project. So npm init dash y to accept all the defaults. Now we have our package JSON. Let's also npm install MongoDB. Now I've created a main JS file. We're going to require MongoDB. We're also going to use .env to use environment variables. I know that this is built into Node.js now, but in case you're using an older version of Node.js, you will still need to use the .env package. And in fact, I forgot to install that. So let's do uh, npm install .env. And then we're going to get our URI, which is going to be our MongoDB connection string. Now to get your connection string in Atlas, just go to your database and click connect. And then under drivers, we're using Node.js. And so this would be my connection string. You'll need to copy yours because yours will be unique to you. So I'll copy this. Back in VS Code, let's create a .env file. So I named this MongoDB connection string, and then I'll paste in my connection string. I'll also need to enter my password here. So I'll do that and then save it. And next, we'll create our client by creating a new Mongo client and using our URI. And then our main function is just going to test to make sure that our connection is working. So it's an async function. We're going to await client connect, and then we're going to await an admin command called ping1. And if that is successful, we should see that we have successfully connected to MongoDB. After that, we'll close our connection. And then let's just call this and use catch and console dir if there is an error. So let's save that and go into our terminal and let's run node main. And there we go. Uh, we've successfully connected to MongoDB. So for step two, we need to set up the embedding creation function. And there are many options for creating embeddings like calling a managed API, hosting your own model, or having the model run locally. In this example, we're going to use the Hugging Face Inference API. Now, Hugging Face is an open source platform that provides tools for building, training, and deploying machine learning models. And we're going to use them because they make it easy to use machine learning models via APIs and SDKs. So if you don't already have an account, go to huggingface.co, create a new account, and then you'll need to retrieve your access token. So you can do that by going up to the top right, click your avatar, and then go to settings. Under settings, go to access tokens, and then create a new token. Give it a name, and make sure that it has the read role. Be sure you never share this token with anyone, and also don't commit it to GitHub. That's why we're going to use environment variables. So copy this, and let's add it to our env file. I'm going to add a new entry here called hf token, and that is going to be equal to that access token that you just copied. And I'll go ahead and paste mine in here, save this, and then we'll go back to our main.js file. All right, we're going to add on to this file, and we are going to use Axios. So let's go ahead and npm install Axios, and then we'll add our Axios require. We'll get our Hugging Face token from our env file, and then create our embedding URL. So for this, we're going to reference the all mini lm l6 v2 model from Hugging Face. And then here is our generate embedding function. It's going to be an asynchronous function and accept some text. So we'll create our response, which will await axios.post. We're going to include our embedding URL. Our input is going to be our text that is passed into our function. And then in our authorization headers, we're going to pass in our hugging face token. If the status response that we get back is not a 200, then we're going to throw an error. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to right now console log the response.data. And of course, we have a try catch to catch any other errors. And then to run this, uh, we'll run generate embedding and pass in the text, MongoDB is awesome. One last thing at the very bottom, let's just go ahead and comment out our main function. We're just going to run the generate embedding function right now, just to test it and make sure it's working. So let's save this, go back into our terminal, 
and run node main again. And there we have it, our vector embeddings for MongoDB is awesome. Now, if you're not familiar with Hugging Face, their inference API is free to begin with, and it's meant for quick prototyping, but has strict rate limits. So if you're dealing with a lot of data, you might wanna consider setting up a paid Hugging Face inference endpoint. And that's going to create a private deployment of the model for you. For step three, we're going to create and store embeddings. So let's put all of this together and execute an operation to create a vector embedding for the data in the plot field from our movie documents collection. And we're gonna store those embeddings in our database. Now, like we talked about before, creating vector embeddings using a machine learning model is necessary for performing a similarity search based on intent. So let's build out this function. So back in our main JS file, let's continue to iterate on this. So in our generate embedding function, instead of console logging the response data, we need to actually return the response data. So let's make that change. And then we're not going to uh, call the function here. So let's delete that. And then in our main function, instead of pinging the database to see if we're connected, let's make some alterations. We'll select our database, the sample inflex database and our collection of the movies collection. So let's get some documents. Docs is going to await collection.find any document where the plot field exists. And we are going to limit that to the first 50. After that, let's loop over our documents. So we're going to create a plot underscore embedding underscore HF field on our document. And that is going to equal our generated embedding. So we're going to await generate embedding function that we defined earlier. And we're going to pass that function our movie plot. So this is going to return that embedding. Then we're going to await collection replace one, and we're going to actually update that document in the database with this new information. And then we're just going to console log that the document has been updated just so we know what's going on. And then finally, we'll close our connection and let's go ahead and uncomment this. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal and run node main. Nice, and so we can see that 50 updates have been made. If we go over to Atlas and we go to our sample inflex database, movies collection, we can verify that this worked by looking at one of these documents and we'll see that we have a plot embedding HF field that's an array. If we expand that, we'll see the vector embeddings that were created. Now, in this case, we're storing the vector embeddings in the original collection alongside the application data. Alternatively, you could store the vector embeddings in a separate collection it all depends on your use case and data access patterns. And once this step completes, you can verify in your database that a new field plot underscore embedding underscore HF has been created for some of the documents. Now we are restricting this to just 50 documents to avoid running into uh, rate limits on the Hugging Face Inference API. If you want to do this over the entire data set of 23,000 documents in our sample inflex database, it will take a while and you may need to create a paid inference endpoint. Now step four is to create a vector search index. So let's head over to Atlas and create a search index. So back in Atlas, we can go to search and then our data source is gonna be cluster zero in this instance and we're gonna to go to Atlas search. Let's go ahead and create a search index. We're gonna use the JSON editor and then click next. For the index name, I'm going to name it plot semantic search. I'm gonna go over to my sample inflex database and select the movies collection. That's where I want the index to be created. And then for the JSON configuration, I'm gonna paste this in. And this is where we can configure how our vector search is going to work. So we need to make sure that the field matches the field that we have uh, created in our collection. So in this instance, it's plot underscore embedding underscore HF. Uh, we need to define the dimensions. In our case, the model that we're using has 384 dimensions. So that's why I set that. For similarity, we're going to choose dot product and the type is going to be Kanan vector. For a description of these fields and other configuration options, be sure to check out the vector search documentation linked in the video description below. So we'll hit next and then create search index. For step five, we're going to query our data. Once the index is created, you can query it using the dollar vector search aggregation pipeline stage. Let's rename this main function. I'm gonna rename this to save embeddings and let's create a new function where we will query our embeddings. So let's go ahead and comment out the save embeddings function because we don't wanna run that this time. So for our query embeddings, we're going to accept a query. In this instance, this will be text that we're accepting from our user. This is an asynchronous function. Again, we're going to connect to our database, to our sample inflicts uh, database and movies collection. 
This is where we'll use our dollar vector search aggregation pipeline stage. So for this, we want to make sure that we specify our index that we just created, plot semantic search is what I called it. For query vector, we're going to await generate embedding and then pass it our query. So that same generate embedding function that we've been using, we're going to generate an embedding of the query that the user is searching for. We will tell it which path, uh, which field to look at in the document. We named that field plot embedding HF. And then number of candidates will set to 100 and limit to four. So we just want to return the top four results. And then again, for more information on the specifics of these parameters, check out the vector search documentation linked in the video description. Lastly, I have one more aggregation stage that is just going to project the title and the plot fields just to make it more readable in the console. And then we'll console log those results. So at the bottom, we'll create our query is going to be imaginary characters from outer space at war. So we're going to call that query embeddings uh, function pass it our query, and then we'll have a catch at the end in case there's any errors. So let's go ahead and run this. We'll save it, open up the console, and let's run node main. And you should get something like this. We have four movies returned with the plot and the title. Now, as you can see here, the results are not very accurate because we only embedded 50 of the movie documents. If the entire movie data set of 23,000 plus documents were embedded, the query imaginary characters from outer space at war would return these results. In this tutorial, we demonstrated how to use the hugging face inference APIs, how to generate embeddings and how to use Atlas vector search. We also learned how to build a semantic search application to find movies whose plots most closely matched the intent behind the natural language query, rather than just searching based on existing keywords in the data set. We also demonstrated how efficient it is to bring the power of machine learning models to your data using the Atlas developer data platform. If this video was helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more MongoDB content.